So I've recently been reflecting on some of my old videos, and one thing my mind keeps coming back to is my entry to the Backlogs one-shot contest from June of last year. Before you say it, no, I don't have an update on when Lemon's going to release the contest video, all I know for sure is that it will be sometime before the heat death of the universe. However, the thing I keep thinking when I see my video compared to the other contestants is, I played it safe. I feel like I took maybe the most straightforward route possible, using magic for the majority of my kills, whereas my peers applied some more creative approaches to some of the one-shots. Now, truth be told, when Lemon first asked me to be a part of this, I found the challenge quite intimidating and didn't hold a lot of confidence in myself that I'd be able to succeed, so yeah, I did opt for the safety of pyromancy as soon as it was available. Now, eight months later, I want to have a go at one-shotting these bosses again, but this time using only melee. My goal here is to definitively confirm which bosses can or perhaps can't be killed in one button press using melee attacks only. Just to clarify, this is not another entry into the one-shot challenge. I'm going to be doing things very differently. I'm not going to screw around with the point system or killing NPCs or mini bosses. I can level up as much as I want and I'll be focusing just on killing the bosses with one hit with melee. As for glitches and exploits, I am not going to allow anything that pushes damage beyond the levels possible at the point in the game I'm at. So no tumble buffing to buff unbuffable weapons, that was a lot of buff in one sentence. No moveset swapping to make a greatsword hit five times in one attack. No acquiring late game equipment without killing the necessary bosses. So for example, I can't get great magic weapon before defeating all the bosses required to get to Anor Londo. What I will allow is any glitch that prevents me from having to spend hours farming, such as the soul duplication glitch or the item duplication glitch for covenant items or upgrade materials, etc. I'll probably need to max stats for even a chance at some of these bosses, and anyone who's ever tried to farm for dragon scales knows how bad a time that is. Lastly, I want to give a big shout out to famous Souls YouTuber Ryan Gosling, aka B and, whose old video on this along with the DMs we exchanged were a tremendous help. With all that done, let's get started. First, I made this beautiful character. Let me know in the comments below one word you'd use to sum up this guy's face. I choose Pyromancer for class and Master Key as gift. The challenge starts once I leave the asylum for obvious reasons, although you know for certain some person is going to write in the comments that this invalidates the challenge and that they turned off the video out of disgust. To that person, I just want to wish you all the best for the future. We touch down in the Flame Zelda Shrine and slap a couple points into Dexterity. Now it's time for Set Up City. My initial plan was actually to grab the Gravelord Sword, so I ran down to the catacombs, grabbed the Eye of Death, and promptly got smashed by this thick boy. There wasn't enough space to squeeze past, I guess that's why he's called the Titanite Demon. On my next run down, I got in an empty coffin and laid there because that's a totally normal thing to do, and then prayed to Nito to get the Gravelord Sword. My plan here was to grab as many strong melee weapons as I could, as I'm a dirty console scrub so I can't easily cheat stuff in. I needed to make sure I had all the necessary options available. I needed a few more strength points to wield the Gravelord Sword though. I then grabbed a Firekeeper Soul, ghosted several women at once, made a mistake running into this valley, grabbed some poppable souls, and activated this bonfire. Then I wished goodnight to this guy, and by some incredible luck he actually dropped the halberd on the first try. I now had enough strength to wield the Gravelord Sword, and of course we grabbed the ever-essential Red Tearstone Ring for 50% more damage when we're below 20% health. Then downtown to Blight Town for a Dragon Scale and Power Within, which I of course flawlessly grabbed without dying. Now back up to Darkroot, killing this innocent and defenseless Crystal Lizard on the way, before buying 362 Andres from Arrow. You probably know what's coming here. I used the arrows and the large soul of a proud knight to trigger the soul duplication glitch and net myself a nice 1 million souls. I'm not going to go into detail describing how the glitch works, as it's been pretty well documented elsewhere, but there is a video link in the description which covers it if you're unaware. With the two twinkling titanite from the crystal lizard, I upgraded the black knight halberd to plus two, leveled my stats to way higher than they probably needed to be right now, and brought all the stuff from Andre that I needed. I lastly went and grabbed the stone armor for later on, and it was now finally time to attempt our first boss, the Bell Olive Goyles. My plan was to use the R2 of the Black Knight Halberd, obviously with some buffs applied. First, I wanted to see how we did with just the Red Tearstone buff, and we actually came up a little short. Close though. So this time, I applied power within just before the cutscene, and the R2 was easily enough to take out the first one. For the second, 
as it only has half health anyway, a running R1 was all it took, and with that, these gargoyles get splitting headaches. Hopefully they have some Alka Beltzer. The first bell is rung, and I just had to decide what the next rational direction to take was. I decided to quickly take out this crystal lizard by the Taurus Demon for two more Twinkling Titanite, letting me get the Black Knight Halberd up to plus three. Now, as for the Taurus Demon, of course you can take him out with a plunging attack, you don't even need buffs for that, but I wanted to try something different. Could I take him out with just an R2 if I had Power Within active and also the Red Tear Stone Ring? Well, let's have a look. I guess you could say that he just got bulldozed. Even though it wasn't part of the challenge, I thought I'd try the Red Kite Drake for a melee one-shot, but it seemed there were some strings attached to this kite and our chances of success blew away in the breeze. While you're recovering from that sentence, how about we try the Capra Demon? Like the Taurus Demon, I wanted to see if it could be done without the plunging attack. The stone armor should help us survive, but on the first encounter we didn't stand a goat of a chance. Second try, we nailed Capra mid-jump and the melee one-shot is complete. Just ignore this part. Ignore it. Can we cut away? Please? Oh for Fundedberg also has an essential item we need, this being the Gold Pine Resin. Remember I said about giving myself all the options? Well, I unlocked the Forest Covenant earlier so I could access Shiva as a merchant to buy the Demon Great Axe and the Demon Great Machete. As these upgraded with normal Titanite, I grabbed the Large Ember from the depths, splat the rat, and then enter the fight with the Gaping Dragon. I don't have anywhere near the power to kill him yet, but he has something very important that I need, the Dragon King Great Axe. I cut his tail to get it and hightail it out of here. To upgrade this beast, I need some dragon scales. I can get one from the undead dragon here, but the rest unfortunately are gonna need to be farmed from these blue drakes who hate dropping scales even at 99 humanity to boost item discovery. Sometimes they do, and other times they miss drake where to land. I died a couple times during this, and bizarrely most of the times I got scales was when I had zero humanity trying to get my souls back. After one incredible run where I got two scale drops, I was finally up to the 10 scales I needed to max the axe. It's just a shame I need another 80 at least. Because nobody has time for that kind of farm, I called in a favour from my buddy Setra. Using his incredible technique known as instant transmission take my items while I reload my save data, we were able to duplicate the dragon scales over and over until I had what I believed would be enough. There's a link to his DJ mix in the description below, make sure to head over, enjoy the drums, and comment you sir are a hero, as is tradition for those who help the channel. With all that in hand, I flew down to the Dragon Covenant in Ash Lake to gain max rank, meaning I get the Dragon Torso Stone. This stone normally gives you a 5 second buff of 25% damage when you roar with it, but by being max rank in the Covenant, it actually goes up to 35%. I also cut the Stone Dragon's tail to get the Dragon Greatsword, and then upgrade the Dragon King Great Axe. Wait, oh god, I rested at the bonfire! <coughs> well, still recovering from my utter stupidity, it was finally time for another boss, Quail Switch K-Lag. So for this one, I got my health down to Red Tear Stone range, buffed the Dragon King Great Axe with Gold Pine Resin, and activated Power Within. Then, I entered the boss arena, used the Dragon Torso Stone, and waited until she got close enough to unleash the Dragon King Great Axe's heavy attack. This raises the axe high and slams down with a huge shockwave, so it's actually two hits, one from the axe and one from the shockwave. With Quelag, it's important that you're standing on this slope at a slightly higher elevation than her, so that the axe is raised high enough to hit her human body, as this part of her takes extra damage. Anyway. Quelag retired from her position as Chaos Switch shortly after this, and took up web design. I rung the second bell, and I was pretty happy to get this one shot without having to resort to the plunging attack from the more slopey side of the arena. Back up at Firelink, it appeared the Keeper had been fired, but no time to dwell on that now. I made a quick trip to the Catacombs to get the Dark Moon Seance Ring for later, sensed the danger in this fortress, snagged some large shards, recovered his Gold Serpent Ring, freed the best X-Men movie, got a hole of a zero, and lit the bonfire at the top of the fortress. With the cage key, I was able to travel back down, upgrade some weapons, buy some charcoal pine resin, and then went back up to take on the Iron Schmeagel. Thus began, perhaps the longest period of testing against any boss in the whole run. I first tried the Dragon King Great Axe with Power Within, Red Tear Stone, Gold Pine Resin, and Dragon Torso Stone. 
this left us about 290 points of damage short. I tried the same with the charcoal pine resin, which perhaps unsurprisingly was worse. Obviously we aren't quite there, but I've still got other options. I freed Grig Boy, grabbed his staff, and went and bought magic weapon from him back in Firelink. Unlike the resins which had a fixed amount of damage, magic weapons buff is based on the magadjust stat of our casting tool, which is in turn affected by the level of our intelligence. I upgraded my intelligence stat to 40, it's a shame there isn't a hack to do this in real life as it might have prevented me from even attempting all this. I equipped magic weapon and headed back up Sens, making sure to cause this snake man a huge amount of suffering on the way. With all the buffs applied, I did a little less than the gold pine resin. But this was with only 40 intelligence, so leveling up higher was an option. Before committing to that though, I decided to try a few other wacky ideas. I was curious if there was a weapon attack that would be able to hit him twice, first staggering him and then making him tumble. First, I tried to see if the Dragon Greatsword's shockwave could hit from one foot to the next. This didn't seem to work. So what other weapons can hit more than once with a single button press? Well, there aren't many, but there is one nearby Rickard's Rapier. I decided to level up intelligence to 50 and also bring faith to 50 as that would be useful later, then I upgraded Rickard's Rapier. With an R2 press, the Rapier does a double poke, but after seeing the damage the attack did, it was clear there was no way this was going to work. I also tried with the R2 of the Demon Great Axe, but this was even worse. It is only plus 10 I suppose. The damage from the Dragon King Great Axe had increased, but judging by the minimal increase, it didn't feel like even going up to 99 intelligence would be enough to push this over the edge. Unfortunately, there was no way to get a better catalyst or a better buff until after Iron Golem, but I could at least get enough upgrade materials to upgrade some of the other weapons to a hopefully usable level, thanks again to Cetra's tireless efforts. Cheers dude. With this, I now had maxed upgraded the Dragon Greatsword. This weapon can't be buffed, but the attack even by itself is very powerful. With all my usual buffs in place, it equaled what I had been getting with the Dragon King Great Axe with the Gold Pine Resin. I tried again to see if the Greatsword Shockwave could somehow hit the Golem twice, and after a few more attempts, something finally happened. I mean that's something unfortunately wasn't the golem getting one shot, but it gave me a much needed laugh throughout this madness. Well, what next? I went down to New London, sealed Ingwood's fate, drained the water, and then grabbed the very large ember. With this and the chunks I had duped earlier, I was able to get the demon great axe to plus 14, and with the 66 strength I had, boosted to 99 when two handing, it had the highest damage output of any of the weapons I had. In theory anyway. When I actually tested it out, it performed worse than either the Dragon King Great Axe or the Dragon Greatsword. I even tried to climb up this ledge and do a plunging attack, but it was nowhere near high enough to get the full effect from it. So this weapon seems to be a dead end for now. I then, thanks to a suggestion from Meaty Jesus, decided to try out the simple and unassuming Halberd. Why the Halberd you might ask? Well the Halberd's R2 does a 2 hit double spin. I'm pretty confident when upgraded enough the Halberd will do decent enough damage, so perhaps this will allow me to topple the Golem. So I upgraded that, and also the Demon Great Machete just for the hell of it, to plus 14. With the Halberd in hand, I was ready. I applied the buffs, ran through, swung connecting with both hits, and… no tumble. From testing, it appears there's too much of a delay between the Golem taking the relevant damage to his ankle and then entering the staggered state which allows him to be knocked off. There would need to be a delay of probably at least a second between the two attacks to actually topple him, and unfortunately there's no weapon in the game that I'm aware of that can hit twice with one button press with that much of a delay between the two hits. So the topple idea has, ironically, plummeted into oblivion. My idea well was starting to run a little dry, but then it hit me. The golem was supposedly much weaker to strike damage than any other, and none of my weapons so far had done this. Was the answer hidden in my first one-shot video all along? The one weapon I had used for the few melee one-shots I did there? The Great Club? I upgraded it to plus 14, admired its firm and graceful form, swung back with all my might, and... Okay, well I can't even say I'm disappointed at this stage. So, last ditch attempt. Level up intelligence to almost as high as it can go, give the Dragon King Great Axe one more shot... Yeah. Now, things here probably look hopeless for me squeezing out any more damage, but there's one thing you probably weren't expecting, dear viewer. 
That being that I am an absolute idiot. You see, I didn't record it earlier, but when I beat Quelag, I joined the Chaos Covenant so I could pay 30 humanity to open the Chaos Door for later. I figured I had 99 liquid humanity on me anyway, so why not? I have to confess, one aspect of these games I know apparently little about is Covenants. I firstly had no idea that I needed to remain part of the Dragon Covenant to get the 35% boost from the Dragon Torso Stone instead of the normal 25%. Okay, but I can just rejoin it at the bonfire, so no big issue, right? At least all this testing has confirmed to me that the only weapons that have a chance of pulling this off are the Dragon King Great Axe and the Dragon Greatsword. But as I attacked the golem here, I noticed something. I was doing more damage, sure, but that's not 10% more. That's more like 5%? Because guess what? Another thing I did not know was that leaving the Covenant lowers your rank. So to get that 5% more damage back, I need to give another 50 bloody dragon scales to the Dragon Covenant. At this point, I had already hassled my buddy Setra twice to help me with this ridiculous endeavour, and given that he's a respectable human being who has to do stuff like be a father to his two daughters, I felt too sheepish to bother him again given this situation was caused by my own stupidity. So I bit the bullet and performed the item duplication glitch, having to spend a stupid amount of time buying pikes from Andre. Again, I'm not going to document here exactly how it works, but there's a video link in the description if you want to see. Worth noting that this glitch does some weird stuff to the brightness of the game, so if some of the footage seems a bit darker at points, that's why. With this, I got myself enough dragon scales once again, rejoined the Covenant, duped some Soul of the Heroes to get my intelligence up to 99 to squeeze the maximum damage out of magic weapon. I also got faith up to 99 for later on. I tried first with the Dragon Greatsword. Okay, damage is looking good, that's actually very close. But now for my max damage dealer, the Dragon King Great Axe buffed with magic weapon, 99 intelligence, 35% boost from Dragon Torso, 40% boost from Power Within, 50% boost from Red to the Stone Ring. It's all there. Let's go! Two eight six five. Fifteen points of damage short of the one shot. But there is no other increase. I'm as max as I can be. I tried again with Gold Pine Resin just for the hell of it, but it was slightly less. Without another buff or a better catalyst, both of which are available only further in the game, I just don't see how this melee one shot is possible. Who knows, maybe I've missed something and someone's going to have some breakthrough to knock down those extra 15 points, but for now at least, I settle for just two hitting the golem and finally move on from this boss. Hopefully I ironed out all the details there. And North London is calling. We light up some fires, the Painting Guardian expires, one-shot this guy in a sec, and also smash up Lautrec. Souvenir of Reprisal is going to be very important later. Godskin Duo, compared to what I just went through, should be pretty straightforward. I opted for Dragon Greatsword just because the R2 is quicker to pull off than the Dragon Great Axe. Running to the right as soon as you enter to dodge Ornstein, Smote is pretty easy to one-shot in the first phase, and then for Super Ornstein, Okay, what the hell was that? Look at this, the lightning spear had already passed me but then suddenly decided, oh wait, now I'm going to hit. Anyway, on the third attempt, things finally fell into place. The executioner got ball smosed and the dragon slayer became unbornstein. This was alarmingly easy compared to that whole I am golem fiasco. Lord Vessel in hand, we get it placed to unlock the rest of the game and then go to pick up great magic weapon, which would have been incredible to have a few hours ago, but ah oh well. We can actually get an even better version of this now anyway, so it becomes redundant quite quickly. After this dragon makes us deceased, we come back and grab this key, grab the crystal ember, and free Logan so we can get crystal magic weapon, doing damage at a rate of 1.4 times our magic adjust. There's just one issue though, we still can't get a better catalyst unless we kill either Seath or Logan. I don't really want to kill Logan yet, as there's actually an even stronger catalyst available if we complete his questline, but to continue it we need to take out Seath. Let's see what our damage is like with crystal magic weapon and our usual buffs. Hmm, uh, okay, about a thousand points of damage short. Seath does resist magic though, so I gave it a try with the charcoal and gold pine resin, but it just equaled less damage due to no scaling. So now I had a difficult decision to make. The two best buffs, Dark Moonblade and Sunlight Blade, both rest with Gwendolyn. 
Doc Moonblade you get from joining his covenant, and its damage increases depending on your rank. But of course leaving the Dragon Covenant will reduce my buff from Dragon Torso Stone by 10% as we saw earlier. Sunlight Blade requires you to actually defeat Gwendolyn as it's at the end of his boss room, but killing him means the Dark Moon Covenant is locked off completely. So here's what I'll have to do. I'm going to do as much as I can with my current setup, try every boss possible, and then switch to the Dark Moon Covenant and try everything again with Dark Moon Blade. If that isn't enough, then I'll kill Gwendolyn and get Sunlight Blade. It's a long process, but I need to be sure I don't miss anything. So let's start with the unending excretion. Crystal Magic Weapon on the Dragon King Great Axe is about a thousand damage short. I tried Dragon Greatsword and unsurprisingly it was a lot less. Stray Charles was also nowhere near with any of the things I tried. Gaping Dragon takes an abnormal amount of damage to the head, so this was easily possible. Goddamn channeler. The Light Moon Fly Butter was also easily possible and got spread out onto a nice slice of toast. Sif surprisingly was not possible, which I was shocked by, but every dog has its day and that day will come soon. Even though it wasn't necessary for the run, I decided to one-shot the Hydra, which was pretty easy, actually. I did the usual DLC entry stuff, and although I didn't have enough to pay to get in, Manus gave me a five-finger discount. So we might as well try our old buddy, Ian the Sanctuary Guard. Make sure to comment thank you, Ian. He's been a long-time supporter of this channel. After a couple attempts, I got some perfect RNG where he lowered me to red tear stone range, then did the fly attack which allowed me to get close, and then did a tail swing instead of moving away, giving me just enough time to layeth the smacketh down and send Ian packing. Now actually, truth be told, I wasn't expecting Artorius to be possible given his high resistances, especially when I saw this initial damage. But it turned out, upon reviewing the footage, that he actually killed me before I finished the attack, hence why it was so low. You can see here that it does a lot more on a clean landing. But with Artorius, it is possible to land a counter hit, landing a blow just as he hits us, which might be able to push the damage past the line. I want to give another big shout to B-And, as he helped me tremendously with this. When you enter the boss room, use the torso stone right away. This more often than not makes Artorius do the jump, which is easy to avoid. Then roar again, and pray he does an attack which will let you have the time and space to land yours. Like this one, for example. This took a good few tries to pull off, but Artorius becomes a one night stand and we can move onwards. I ventured down and one shot the Mimic for this crest key. Hawkeye Goff helped to yeet Calamite, and I went and grabbed the Titanite Slab from Calamite's boss room. Remember, I haven't even been able to acquire a single one yet because I couldn't beat the Stray Demon and couldn't be bothered to farm the stupid Dark Wraiths. I of course duped the hell out of it, and with that, plus the Crystal Ember, I got me a plus 5 Crystal Demon Great Axe for monster damage. So what's the play here with Calamite? Well, I was actually excited to try this because I remember seeing a video of someone doing this years ago. It might have even been the first Dark Souls one-shot video I ever watched. I can't remember who it was, so apologies. By going down the ladder, climbing back up, and then dropping down these ledges, you can actually execute a plunging attack on Calamite if you're quick enough. Here, I did everything right apart from my health wasn't low enough for Red Tearstone to activate, but you can clearly see it is possible. However, there's a couple of problems. First, the timing of this is extremely tight to pull off so you don't get blasted by Calamite. But secondly, you need to land the plunging attack just at the right point in his body so it hits twice. I also learned the hard way that you have to do it from the lowest ledge or else the full damage kills you instantly, meaning that you die before the death animation finishes. But Finally, after about 20 attempts, man that felt satisfying. So for the DLC, that just leaves Manus, and from the damage we were doing here, it's already pretty clear this is going to be an issue. With these attacks, we're not even taking off half his health even with all the buffs applied, hands down the biggest roadblock so far. With most of the testing I wanted to do completed, I decided it was finally time to leave the Dragon Covenant, join the Blades of the Dark Moon, and make use of the Dark Moon Blade with the Dark Moon Talisman for a 99 faith stat. This should give a much stronger magic buff than Crystal Magic Weapon on our Sorcerer's Staff. Or at least that should be the case, but actually it did even less than before. It was at this point I came to a realisation. Calamite and Manus have similar health and damage resistances, 
but the one difference is Calamite has the cliff ledges above the arena which allows the plunging attack. Without that, Calamite would have been impossible, and as Manus has neither of these, it's pretty apparent that there's nothing we're going to do to be able to increase our damage anywhere near where it would need to be. The only other buff we can get is Sunlight Blade, but Manus has equal lightning resistance to magic resistance, so it's unlikely this is going to make our damage more than double. Instability damage might help, but even so, that's an extra 40% damage at best judging by what we saw with Fire Tempest during the one-shot run. So, I think it's pretty safe to say this one-shot is not possible with melee without glitches of some kind. There is one other option I haven't tried here that some of you might be going berserk about in the comments, but just bear with me. One thing that was possible though was Sif. It was a real dog day afternoon for him as the Dark Moonblade infused Great Axe ended this one quick. I made sure to grab the Hornet Ring behind the grave as well. But Ceaseless Discharge still wouldn't, um, cease. Now there is a way to actually do this with a crazy jump plunge attack that hits him enough times as you fall, but I couldn't get it to work and my last save state was a while back. Even though I couldn't do it, it can be done and if you want to see it done correctly, check out Meaty Jesus's one shot video, I've included the link in the description if you've not seen it. But we're straight into another boss which I fear just probably isn't possible. The Demon Fire Sage for some reason has just under 6000 HP and with all the buffs plus Dark Moon Blade at 99 faith, we did about two thirds of its health. Not even close. I tried with the Crystal Demon Great Axe, but that was even worse. Now it might be possible to hit it as it jumps back for instability damage, but adding 40% to either of those numbers isn't going to cut it, and the Dragon King Great Axe Shockwave simply isn't going to connect if the demon's jumping. As much as that made me want to stage quit, I decided that I needed to one shot a wheel boss before I put a pin in this. Unsurprisingly, this was the easiest one shot in a long while. I was still over encumbered due to the earlier glitching, so unfortunately, you'll never know what the mask it dropped was. Ever. Before braving Tomb of the Giants, I went back to everyone's favourite scaleless albino dragon, and much to my annoyance, we actually did less damage than last time. I suppose that does make sense given the magic resist, but still left me seething. So, back in this godforsaken place, I grabbed the grant from Leroy as this would be tremendously useful. You see, for Gravelord Nito, those skeletons running around are the last thing I need, and thankfully the grant works as a divine weapon to take them out. With them gone, you can just quit out the game and it starts you outside the fog gate, but the skeletons remain dead, leaving me free to set up my one shot. With Dark Moon Blade and all the buffs applied, oh wait, hold on, I missed. There we go. Right, so still about 700 points of damage short. Demon Great Axe was e even less. I don't know why I keep trying with this thing. So is Nito impossible also? Well, it's time to bust out one of the trick I've been saving. Paying a visit to the crestfallen merchant, I buy the Greatsword. You see, the Greatsword has a very important R2 attack which looks like this. See that thrust? Well, we can make that do some pretty crazy damage. First, I upgrade it to plus 15, and now I equip the Leo Ring. The Leo Ring gives a massive 40% boost to thrust attack counter damage, meaning that if we land a thrust attack as the enemy is attacking along with our other buffs, we'll get ourselves a nice damage boost. This is what the damage looks like normally, but upon reflection, even with the supposed boost from the Leo Ring, this isn't likely to be enough. So I went and got the Greatsword Crystal Infused to boost the damage further. This looks a bit better, but I'm still not 100% convinced it's going to be enough, but I need to actually land the counter hit, which proves challenging. But finally, after many failed attempts, we got it. I can't believe that actually worked. Greatsword Nito got one shot by the Gravelord. From bone shot to one shot. Now you'll probably all be saying, why don't you go one shot those other bosses with this now? Well, check out the damage to the Sage Demon Fire. Still about 1500 points of damage shy. At this point, it had become clear that this walking hemorrhoid was not going to be possible. There was simply no way we were going to get that much damage, and I didn't even attempt Manus with this because he has higher health and way higher damage resistances than this guy, so it was pointless even trying. I settled for a two shot because I wanted to attempt the next boss after this. The next leg of this run was Centipede Demon, and yeah, this was super easy compared to most of the other bosses at this stage. No issues to speak of, this one gets relegated to the easy one shot tier. I also tucked Bed of Chaos in for the night with ease, obviously I didn't trade with the boss that's always a guaranteed one shot, obviously. But with all that done, it was finally time to gain access to Sunlight Blade. 
First, I gwinned Pindolin to the floor with my Demon Great Axe for another easy one-shot and grabbed Sunlight Blade from the chest beyond. After all this, could I finally one-shot Seath given he's supposed to be very weak to lightning? Surely this has to be it. I applied the buffs, shattered Seath's crystal, raised the Dragon King Great Axe high and... It still wasn't enough. So that's it. Seath was another boss where there simply was nothing more we could do and the damage just wasn't there. Except, no, because there was something I could do. Being free of the shackles of the Dark Moon Covenant, I was able to go back to Ash Lake and rejoin the Dragon Covenant, give the Robbing Tossers another 50 Dragon Scales to gain my 10% boost back on the Dragon Torso Stone. Let's go! What's this? What's this guy's comment saying? Uh, you haven't one-shot Priscilla. Oh my god, the run is invalid. Go one-shot Priscilla so I can excite myself by looking at her feet. Right, fine, Devlington87, we'll do that. What do you mean contraption does not move? It's a goddamn painting. Great, just wonderful. So I made the long mission to grab the doll, got to Priscilla, expecting an easy knockout, but was pretty surprised by what happened. It didn't kill her? That's impossible. After trying again, I figured it might be something to do with her being in her NPC state at the start of the fight. So to counter this, I gave her a light tap with my talisman, quit out the game and reloaded it so I was outside the fog gate with her aggroed inside. After that, I just had to locate her while invisible, land the hit, and I facilitated her demise. As I prepared to dive off the edge of the painting, I couldn't get one thought out of my mind. If I'd been able to one-shot Seath, surely I would be able to one-shot the Stray Demon. According to all the wikis, he has less health and damage resistances than Seath, but yet when I tried the exact same approach, I got significantly less damage. And to be honest, I, I really don't know why this is. I can only think either the wikis are wrong, which is completely possible, or maybe because Seath's whole body touches the floor, he takes more damage from the shockwave, or maybe the bulge between his tentacles is just a massive weak point. In any case, this setup wasn't going to work, but there was one more thing I could try. Speaking of Seath though, with him deceased, we could now get Logan's Catalyst as well as kill Logan for the Tin Crystallization Catalyst. For the hell of it, I tried the Tin Crystallization Catalyst buffed Crystal Magic weapon on the Stray Demon just to be sure, and this did a whole two points of damage more. I even tried with Crystal Greatsword Leo Ring combo, which was again better but still about 500 points of damage short. So it was clear, at least with anything I can think of, Everybody loves Straymond, much like his hot and spicy cousin was not possible to melee one-shot. For the final couple bosses, I decided to give myself a big old health upgrade as this would probably come in handy along with another achievement slot to make testing a bit easier. So the four kings, the bane of any kind of one-shot challenge. The kings are apparently most weak to lightning, so let's test out what the max damage we can do to one king is. About 3800, slightly less if I use crystal magic weapon instead. So in theory, were I able to hit three kings with this, I would be able to do it. But that's actually not possible. It might be possible to hit three kings with the shockwave of the Dragon King Great Axe, but only one king would take the initial hit from the weapon. So perhaps with four or five kings? Well, maybe. But that would require the kings to actually get close to each other, which they don't like to do. I couldn't find any way to get them to come anywhere near each other, let alone stand there for me to do this. I'll probably never say anything is impossible, as a few months ago everyone thought doing any kind of four kings one shot was impossible. But I can't see how this could be done with melee. So I settled for one shotting each individual king and decided to finally put an end to my one shot adventures. With the Lord Souls placed, the Black Knights executing Project Nightfall, and Gwyn just waiting to die, I tried a no parry one shot and got burnt to cinders. I opted for a crystal magic weapon with the tin crystallization catalyst and the crystal demon great axe to finish the job. I tried without the hornet ring just to see what the damage was like and it was short by a fraction. I decided to stop messing around and put on the hornet ring, pretty much an instant Gwyn condition when it comes to this fight. I entered, took advantage of the parry Gwyndo and put an end to this wild experiment of a run. You know what, I actually kind of enjoyed this. 
Did I achieve anything new that nobody's ever done before here? Probably not, but I got to pull off some one shots that I'm genuinely proud of, and maybe I've even definitively answered which bosses can and can't be one shot with melee. At least until someone like Challenger Andy comes out with some game breaking strategy that makes me look like a total casual. But in any case, I had fun, and I hope you did too. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments below what your favourite type of cheese is, and hit me with a like and subscribe as it really helps support the channel. Until next time, I've been JK Leeds. Have a good one and see ya.